lifting. And if I find, if I go underneath my ribs right here, I think about lifting my ribs up. So as I lean over to the side, lifting, helping to get that feeling of lift. It's not so much that we're using our fingers to lift us up, but we're facilitating the feeling of lifting by using our fingers. So this can be, you know, touching a part of our body is often a good way to be able to uh, connect with that part of the body. So keep that in mind as you do your practice that if uh, sometimes I'll point out, if you touch a certain part of the body, it helps to kind of wake it up or, or make us more aware of it up here so that we're then able to actually move that part of the body. So we're going from side to side like this. And I really like this exercise because it works a little bit on balance. If I start to lean over and then I lift my foot up a little and actually let's lift it up and circle it around. Just hold the balance for a moment. And then we're going to come back down and really feel the foot as it comes down and then come on to the other side and lift up and circle the foot around. So this has the added benefit of not only working on balance because I, I don't, you can even put your arms out like this. The only things that are supporting me are my one foot and my buttock on one side. And the rest of me is kind of floating. And the other nice thing is it really works on the core body, these muscles in the middle of the body. So let's try that again one more time to the other side and then circle the other way if you can remember or circle both ways if you can't remember. Go back and forth like that and then go back the other way. So just to warm us up a little bit. So we're breathing nice full yogic breaths and then come back down and now sit up right in the middle, sit up right in the middle and notice uh, if you can see my feet, I don't have any socks. Yay. It's finally warm here. It's going to be a warm day today. It's going to be maybe 80 degrees here in the Boston area. So it's pretty nice. Yeah. Most people I know are pretty excited here about it. We have not had a day like this in a long time since, I don't know, September, October of last year. So it's been a really long time. And we're gonna sit up nice and tall. And this is a place where I'm gonna grab a block here. Remember, you can take a towel or anything that you have, a rolled up towel or a block, something that's not too heavy though. Don't pick something heavy in case I have dropped the block on my foot. So this, these blocks are actually quite light. They won't hurt your feet if you, I mean, it might hurt a little, but it won't damage your feet. And I'm gonna use that as a way to help squeeze the thighs together. You can also adjust the, the, uh, the width, depending on the width of your pelvis. My pelvis is relatively narrow. So for me, it's better on a narrow spot like this. And then I'm gonna add a little movement. I'm gonna inhale and circle the hands around. So I'm inhaling up and exhaling down. Noticing the chin might lift up a little bit as you come up and then the chin may go down as you come down. And you might even notice a little rocking in the pelvis. I'll turn sideways so you can see. So as I come up, my chin lifts up and my heart's lifting and my pelvis is rocking forward. So I get a nice curve in the lumbar spine. And then as I'm coming down, that curve goes a little bit back the other way. I don't want to, if I do too much back like this, there's a tendency to uh, compress the front of the vertebra. So it opens the back of the spine, the vertebra in the very back open and it squashes the vertebra in the front. It's not really, that's not great for the discs between the vertebra. So we're circling the hands around with the breath, inhaling up, exhaling down, inhaling up, exhaling down. You can even bring the hands together and very mindfully raise them up 
and then very softly turn them out so my back the back of my hands are facing each other and then they float down and around and then they mindfully come together i'm going to change the direction here and notice that the block is gone and i'm using my attention to give a little contraction with these muscles here without letting them sque squeeze together so I'm not squeezing them together, but I'm gently contracting them. And I've learned that when I was holding the block. So I try to feel what the block feels like. And then when I take it away, I try to remember what it felt like to squeeze the muscles. It can take a little practice. So if you find that it's hard to do, try the block again. And then after a while, we start to be able to feel the contraction in the muscles. And that might take several times, not, not just today, but it may take over several weeks. And let's bring the hands back down and roll the shoulders. So I'd like to start out with, uh, actually let's start out with the sound of ohm. So this is uh, the, uh, <clears throat> ohm is really yoga for the voice, yoga for the voice. So it's, the sound is the ah, mouth wide, and then o, uh, o shaped like a fish, and lastly closing the mouth. So we'll do it. Uh, we'll do it a few times, since since we're unable to uh, to do it together as in un in unison. We'll we'll do it for about thirty seconds. So we'll start together, and please just continue making the sound of ohm, thinking about smoothness in the ohm the shape of the mouth, smoothness, and don't worry about how loud it is. Think about smoothness. So that might mean uh, dialing back the uh, effort or the volume a little. Better to be quieter and smoother. Um, I'm just taking a normal breath and do it again. Um, keeping the shoulders relaxed. Um, the face and eyes are soft, and then one last time. and tall sitting up nice and tall so extending the spine up and then as you extend the spine up keep the spine long so the whole center of the body is still going up and then go ahead and release the chin down it's like i'm bowing my head then you make it a little stretch on the back of the neck or even in the upper back as long as there's no pain so if you're getting pain, any pain in the back or the neck, lift up some till the pain goes away. You can even begin again. Just try lifting the chin up very slightly and then softly letting the chin come down so the throat is soft. <clears throat> and we'll sit up nice and tall. So you might even want to take a sip of water. And let's begin with some range of motion. We'll start with opening and closing the hands. Opening and closing the hands. So this is an opportunity while we do this to actually work on our posture as well. To think about sitting taller and lifting the chest. Sometimes there's a tendency to slump. I'll turn sideways. So this is, this is slumping. Uh, and we all do it. We all tend to slump. But See if you can sit up tall while you do this so that your heart is lifted. And you might notice that this creates a little bit of a curve. So we have those three curves that we always want to have in the back if we can. The lumbar curve goes in down at the bottom. The thoracic curve between the shoulder blades goes out so it points in that direction. And the cervical uh, curve in the neck goes in the same direction as the lumbar. 
So when we lose those curves are what give or what help to give the back its strength and we'll circle the hands around. And let's do this. Let's scoot back in the chair. And if you want, if you're not already scooted back, if you'd like, you can lift your feet up and circle the ankles at the same time. And then we'll circle the other way. And then we'll circle in one direction, either the left or the right. And then we'll circle back the other way. And whenever we do rotations like this, we try to keep the movement of the other parts of the body as minimal as possible. So even though there's a little bit of movement in my knees, there's not a big movement like this. We want the knees to stay stable and we want the elbows to stay stable here. So we're isolating the joint and then we're going to sit up nice and tall and we're going to extend the arms out and we're going to lift up one hand and touch the shoulder and at the same time extend the foot out like this and then come back down. Then we'll do the other side. So if we're just doing the arms, we would normally just lift up both arms like this. But in the let's start out with one hand, one arm, one leg. You can even imagine there's a connection between the uh, between the hand and the foot, so that as the foot or the hand come up, either the foot pushes the hand or the hand pulls the foot. And if you lose track, if you lose track. Just uh, take a moment and come back to a neutral position like this and try it again. You can even experiment. And if you'd like, you can do the same side. And it feels a little different. Because as we've talked before, the um, this when we do one side of the body and the other, we call this a uh, bilateral movement because it's using both halves of the brain and both and opposite sides of the body. And then we'll sit up nice and tall and go ahead and lift one knee up and then swing the knee, swing the knee, and then go ahead and swing the opposite wrist like this. I've just barely lifted up my uh, opposite knee. So my thigh is still kind of on the chair but the part that's closest to the knee is slightly lifted off the chair. And then I'm going to come back down. I'm going to do the other side now. And if you want, you can even add a little bit more. So remember, this is your practice and you're always welcome. You know, some people might find a little bit more movement to be a little more um, enjoyable. So we always want, if our practice is not enjoyable, then we will stop doing it. And we always want to find a way to make our practice enjoyable. And now let's go ahead and we're going to go from side to side like this, kind of like what we did before, lifting up, back and forth. And see if you can notice the weight shifting. Actually, let's bring the hands up like this. And let's go like this. We'll lean to one side and then lean to the other. So the hands are kind of like a, a for balance. The hands are out for balance. And the further you lean over and the slower you go, the harder it is. Usually if it's, you go a little faster, for many people, it feels easier. So you can experiment with how fast you go. And then see if you notice the, the effort going on in the belly down here. So when I lean to one side, I have the muscles on the opposite side keeping me up so that I don't fall out of the chair. So always be careful. You know, we, we talk a lot in yoga about ahimsa about nonviolence. So we need to be very careful in our practice to make sure that we're doing things that are um, not going to hurt us, not going to create pain or injury, 
and also not going to risk uh, falling over or getting injured. So, and a lot of that comes from actually thinking about what we're doing, really, really paying attention. A lot of times we do things and because we're used to doing them, we don't pay that much attention. And some people might actually refer to that as mindfulness. If you've been practicing or if you're interested in mindfulness, part of it is the idea of actually paying attention to exactly what you're doing right at the moment. So we're going to uh, roll the shoulders. We're going to lift up and roll the shoulders back. And then try one shoulder and then the other. And then we'll go the other way. Try one shoulder and then the other. Kind of like, actually, let's do this. Let's, uh, we'll swim. This is another movement that I really like because as we swim like this, if you're used to swimming, if you watch swimmers, well, it's hard to see, but if you look, uh, if you've seen people in the Olympics and you watch the cameras from under the water, you'll notice how the hand reaches across. So as you come out, it comes out and then it comes across to the opposite hip, down to the opposite hip. So it sweeps the water back past the hip. And that facilitates our turning of the body, which is what we're, what we're emphasizing at this moment. So we're reaching out and then notice how my, I'm turning as I, my arm sweeps down the leg, my body, my shoulder comes forward and I start to turn the body. So think about that. Think about swimming. You can even close your eyes. Imagine you're swimming. And I think for most of us, I know a number of people who swim regularly, but have been unable to because of um, our um, quarantining. So this would be a nice way. I know it's not the same, but it does feel the movement is really similar. And you'll notice that as I reach out in order to breathe in this crawl stroke, I can just let my head turn to the side. So this movement as we actually swim facilitates turning the head and being able to breathe. And let's do a little backstroke now. A little backstroke. You have to be more, a little more careful with the backstroke. The external rotation in the shoulder can be problematic for people. So try to make it a little bit easier. Maybe the circles will be smaller. Maybe the hands will be closer to the shoulders. So it'll be more like lifting the elbows back like this. And then we'll bring the arms down. We're gonna do the neck. So before we do the neck, let's, uh, let's give our uh, earlobes a little squeeze here like this. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my fingers and kind of like I'm uh, just rubbing my fingers together like this. So it's not hard. I'm not doing it hard and I'm not hurting my ears. There's no pain at all in my ears. So if there's any pain, you're either doing it too hard or your ears really don't like it and you probably shouldn't do it. And I'm just gonna walk up my ears or go step by step up my ears and very gently massage like this. And I'm going to very gently squeeze, squeeze my fingers and sort of pull the ears very gently. And again, there's no pain. So it's soft enough where it just sort of feels like it's like stretching a rubber band. I mean, ears are kind of rubbery anyway. And then this, so, so this can help facilitate our turning the head. I might've mentioned that the last time, uh, but we're going to start with lifting the chin up and down. Remembering not to drop the head too far back. A little bit back is okay. If you start to lift the chin and it drops back and you're getting pain in the back, then you're going too far. Pain in the back or the neck. Keeping the jaw relaxed. So the, the jaw, the tongue, and the throat are all relaxed. So think about softening where the, uh, the voice box is. And then come back up and we're going to tip the head. And if you want to use your hands as a pillow, you can. 
And if you want to add the breath, you can do that too. So we're exhaling as we come over to the side and we're inhaling up. And then we switch to the other side. And I'm noticing that my, for me, my legs kind of fall apart like this. So I'm going to try the block back. And it helps remind, to, so holding the block helps me to remember to keep my inner thighs a little bit active. And I'm using maybe 20% effort to hold the block. I'm really not squeezing very hard. And then one more time on each side. And then we're going to turn the head side to side. So feel like you're sweeping the head. And if you want, you can add your hand like this. Think about sweeping the hand and then following the sweeping action with the sweeping of the chin. So there's a real, uh, there's a smoothness. There's a very, very smooth feeling about this. It's okay if you have to make the movement smaller. So if you start to get to the side and you get a little, sometimes people's necks bother them or it doesn't move as freely, try not going so far. And then we can work here just right in the area that feels comfortable. And then we're going to circle the head around. Remembering to not to drop the head backwards. So we're slowly going around in a circle. If this makes, if you start to feel dizzy at all, try not, make sure your head doesn't drop back and also go a little slower, go a little more mindfully. So whenever we circle around like this, the, uh, the inner ear, the fluid in the inner ear is moving. Let's go the other way. And for some people, it can make them a little dizzy. So we don't, we want to try to avoid that. Keeping the shoulders and arms and hands relaxed. My hands are just relaxed right on my legs. My fingers are relaxed. And then we'll come back up. I'm going to get rid of the block now. We're going to rock our feet. This is going to work with the, um, with the ankles, all the muscles in the ankles, as well as the calves and the muscles up and down the shin. So thinking about lifting the heels up and come up there for a minute and just walk the feet in. And then go ahead and walk the feet back out and lift the toes up. And then walk the feet in and lift the ankles up. And then walk the feet out, walk the toes up, out. And so the other choice is when you do this, so whenever we do any of these exercises, you are welcome to stand up and do them. So for certain ones, certain ones you can't do, but you could do this one standing. So continue, if you're seated, continue with the rocking of the feet back and forth. But if you want to stand up, you can take your chair like this and you can come up on the toes. Notice how I have my fingers on the, uh, on the chair for balance. So I can come back up and then I can also lift the, the toes up and spread the toes when I come down. And I'm rocking ever so slightly back on the heels. So the weight shifts a little bit back to the heels, but be very careful about losing the balance backwards like this. So it's nice to hold on to the chair. So I'm not, but I'm not really holding on to, for the chair to keep me up. I'm staying in control with my feet and having my hands here so that I'm better informed about my balance. So whenever I touch something, the wall, a chair, it helps my balance. And <clears throat> Let's do mountain pose since we're standing. So you can do seated mountain pose or standing mountain pose. So if you're going to do a standing mountain pose, you'll stand up with the feet anywhere from touching like this to about a hip width apart. 
And if that, if that feels uncomfortable, you can even try a little wider if you want. It's really about finding what you feel most comfortable with. I like my feet uh, about hip width or a little bit less maybe. And I'm gonna stand up nice and tall. And let's add the arm, some arm movements. We did this at the very beginning, but we're gonna do it standing. So we're gonna inhale up. And as you inhale up, think about the lengthening of the spine as you press the feet, the soles of the feet press into the floor here, and then the knees bend ever so slightly. I'll turn sideways so you can see. As I come up, my knees bend ever so slightly. So see how they're going forward a little bit? And then the arms come up and around and down. So when I'm coming down is when my knees bend slightly. People tend to overbend your knees. It's really about, so, think about softening the knees as you come down. Think about softening them so that they get soft right here. And then as, they, as we come up, I extend the legs. Think about pressing the thighs back towards the wall behind you. And that's gonna help give me a little lift. I want this feeling of lift in the spine so I grow taller. So I use the extension of the arms and that extension of the legs to give that feeling of lift. Now let's go the opposite way. Now, same thing. The arms are going opposite. The knees bend slightly with the hands down. And then as the hands come up, the knees straighten and they come up. So there's a softening of the knees as the hands are coming down. Think soft hands when they're touching each other. So see if you can feel like the palms are kind of melting into each other and the hands are softening. And we're doing it with the breath. So we're inhaling on the way up and exhaling down, inhaling up and exhaling down. And if you're seated, you're doing the same thing. So if you're standing, you can continue to stand. If you're seated, it's the same thing. And we're thinking about pressing the feet down here as we're seated. Thinking about pressing the feet down as we're seated. And go ahead and bring the hands down. <clears throat> we're going to do a, a tree pose. Um, so if you're standing, if you're standing and you know tree pose, go ahead and do it. You can even do the ankles if you want. <laughs> and... Uh, so tree pose, let's do it like this today. We'll, uh, we'll step the foot out like this if you're seated and then bring the foot up to the, uh, the leg of the chair like this. And notice when I'm doing tree pose, there's this tendency for my body to rotate like this to the side when I bring my leg out. I wanna actually have the body facing more towards the front. So there's a little opening here in the groin. If you're standing, like this. So try that and take a few breaths if you're seated. And if you're standing, we want to shift the weight into the into one leg. So let's I'll mirror you. We'll do the uh, left leg first. And then I'm just going to lift up my foot and turn the leg out, just like as if I was going to put my leg on the outside of the chair. And then I'm going to come up on my toes and then find a spot Either the heel can be on the uh, next to the ankle, or I can actually bring the sole of the foot up on the inside of the calf. And I'm going to take a few breaths here. So the most important thing, whether you're seated or standing, is to remember to keep breathing. So see if you can find a little bit of ease in the pose. In yoga, we talk uh, in Sanskrit. There's a in the Yoga Sutras. There's a um, uh, yo yoga is defined as, and this is yoga asana, as a balance of ease and effort. A balance of ease and effort. So see if you can hang out here for a minute and just extend the spine up and breathe. And then come back down and we'll do the other side. So if you're standing, we'll switch sides. We'll stand up nice and tall and we'll step the leg open like this and then bring the foot 
somewhere. And if you're seated, you're going to do the opposite side with the chair. You're going to step the foot out. And then with the sole of the foot, find the, uh, the leg of the chair like this. And remember to turn back a little bit so that you're facing the front like this. So the uh, belly button is facing more. A little bit to the side's okay, but try to avoid turning all the way to the side. So we turn our whole body back this way, and then we're going to sit up nice and tall. And if you're seated, think about pressing that, uh, that foot into the floor and gently pressing the foot into the into this leg of the chair. And that's similar to what we would do if we were standing. We would think about pressing the standing leg and think about very gently pressing the sole of the foot into the calf. And if you want, you can add your arms. And you can always step down and come back to the pose. You can always step down and come back to the pose. So if you need to rest or take a breath, Feel free to do that. Remember, see if you can find some ease here. Even smile. Smile. Think about all the trees outside with leaves. Yeah, and come back down. And uh, let's do the other side. I think we have one more. Um, one more tree left here. So we're standing up nice and tall. And whether you're standing or sitting, bend the leg. Find a spot for the sole of the foot. And then go ahead and add the arms if that's comfortable. And we can always step down for balance. You can always find a little balance. You can also use the chair if you're standing, not leaning on the chair as much as just touching the chair. Even just having the chair out in front like this can be a nice way to practice. And you can have both arms out for an added challenge, or you can have one arm out. You can even switch like this. But no matter what position you're in, see if you can find some ease and use the breath. Use the breathing, nice full breathing to find that ease. And we'll come, go ahead and come back and we'll do the other side. So we'll stand up nice and tall and then we'll move that uh, opposite foot out. So we're opening the groin here and then find a spot for the sole of the foot, whether it's on the calf or on the ankle, and then sitting up nice and tall. And then you can add your, your branches, however you like, your branches. Finding a spot where it feels comfortable and remembering if you Add a smile if you can. Add a little smile. So hopefully yoga is, is joyful. We'll go ahead and step down. We try to find some joy. Yoga is hopefully a joyful part of your life, not a chore. So if it, if, if it does seem like a chore, um, try a little less effort. A little less effort. It might... It might sound contrary, or at least it's a very, uh, you know, we're always taught to do our best and to do 110%, but in yoga, sometimes less is more. And so if you're standing, if you're still standing and you want to stay, stay standing for a minute, you can't, we're going to do a little chest opener like this. I'm going to turn to the side so you can see, and I'm going to interlace my fingers behind or find some place for my hands. Some people may be more comfortable with the, uh, I'll turn all the way around so you can see. Fingers are pointing down. So notice my fingers are right on the top of my buttocks and my palms are right in the small of my back, like this. So I'm finding some way to, uh, uh, with some ease, keeping the arms behind me. So <clears throat> when I hold the elbows like this, I don't have to use a lot of effort. The same thing with this. It's not much effort to keep my arms back there. And we're going to do that as we breathe. So think about inhaling. Notice the chest lifting. So the chest is lifting, the shoulders are moving back. 
being mindful that the shoulders aren't riding up towards the ears. So if the shoulders start to ride up towards the ears, go ahead and drop the hands down. Even if you had your hands on the back of the thighs like this, that would even be okay. Just holding on to uh, right where the uh, thigh meets the buttock, just sort of a little crease there, putting our hands back there. So, or even dropping the fingers, interlacing and dropping the fingers down like this. And you'll notice as you drop the hands down, there's a tendency for the shoulders to move down as the arms drop. And just breathing. If the belly begins to stick out, sometimes our bellies kind of poke out when this happens. Think about contracting the belly slightly. So even just rubbing the belly like this, feeling a contraction, a little gentle contraction in the belly. And that helps to support the back when we do this. So when we stand or if we're seated, we want to make sure that we're helping the back with the belly. And that means a gentle contraction in the belly. Extending the spine up, even thinking about lifting the very crown of the head up. It's almost like the crown of the head. You can imagine there's a string attached to the top of the head and it's pulling the head up. And then we'll go ahead and relax. And we're going to swing the arms like this. So if you're tired of standing, you can sit. And if you're tired of sitting and standing is okay, you're welcome to stand. So you're always welcome to change your position a little. We're doing the same movement, essentially. It is a little, it feels a little different for the legs when I stand up. And this movement is a lot about the actual, the core of the body, the releasing the, the spine and the abdomen. And then we'll come back down and let's all sit down for a minute. <clears throat> we'll take a few breaths like this. So we'll inhale. This is our cactus breath, so inhaling. And exhaling, inhaling and exhaling. Please give yourself a little hug and inhaling and hug back the other way. So any hug is okay. Any hug is better than no hug. So even if you just take hold of your elbows like this, for some people this may be enough. And some people may take hold of the upper arms like this. And some people may take hold of the shoulders like this. And some people may reach back and even begin to touch the shoulder blades. And then the next time you come together, pause for a moment and take a breath like this. And then uh, give a little sigh as you exhale and notice and try it one more time. Noticing where the breath goes as we inhale. And you'll probably find that it's harder to breathe in this front area because it's all, um, there's no room. There's no room because of the arms. I'm going to bring the arms down. So one of the things that this, this crossing of the arms does and breathing at the same time is it encourages the breath to move more into the back of the body or the side ribs and the back ribs rather than just the front area. And also the chest is oftentimes where people breathe. And this, when we're, when we're contained in the chest like this, we have to breathe somewhere else. So you may notice that difference. Let's try that one more time. So inhale a couple of times, just inhale normally cactus breath. And then when you're ready, you can give yourself, wrap yourself up, whatever feels comfortable for you. Remember, shoulder blades, elbows, and then go ahead and take a couple of breaths like this and see if you can relax as you do it. In other words, we're softening the shoulders and the face and the eyes, even though it's a slightly uncomfortable, but no pain, no real big discomfort. So if you have a lot of discomfort, 
uh, release the arms a little bit and try with the uh, hands further out like this. And see, just we're experimenting with the breath here. So we're feeling the breath. And then we're going to release the arms down and let's roll the shoulders. And then back the other way. And then one last time, we'll sweep the arms. This is to reopen the heart. When we do this crossing like this, there's a tendency for the, uh, the chest to be like, you know, be contracted. And we want to actually be most of the time the chest open. It makes us feel better to have an open heart. I think that's why sometimes they say when people, when somebody has an open heart, they feel better. So it's a, it's a figurative expression and a literal expression too. Because we do know that when people are not feeling well, um, there's a tendency for them to slump like this and their heart gets all closed. Like people who are depressed or sad tend to be kind of curved over. And people that are happy, that are really joyful, their hearts are open. And it's a, there's this connection between how we feel and the position that our body takes. Uh, it's an interesting, um, it's interesting. So let's uh, bring the hands together and take a couple of breaths. And then bring the hands down to the knees and we're going to circle around. So the shoulders are circling around here. If you're looking for more of a challenge, you can get rid of the hands, either holding them like this. You could even get more of a challenge by sweeping the hands around like this. Being mindful about your lower back. So as I'm coming forward, I need to be really careful that my lower back feels okay. You can also make, so if this is uh, bothering your back, try sitting up a little bit more and circling smaller, making smaller circles. Hi. And then go back the other way. So we'll circle back the other way. We have a guest. <laughs> this is Isabel. Okay, sit down. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And we'll sit up nice and tall. And then we're going to go side to side. So we're going to a little lateral extension here. So we'll starting, starting out with the hands on the shoulders. And notice as I go to the side that I'm lifting my elbow up and I'm lengthening the side of the body here. And I'm keeping the uh, foot down. So don't let the foot lift up. I want to keep a connection in both feet. I want to feel grounded. I want to feel grounded as I do this. And feeling grounded in the buttocks. Although one buttocks is going to want to lift up as you lean over. You can also extend the arms if this feels okay. So you have a lot of choices here. You can be anywhere. You can even have the hands further down if it bothers your shoulders. So this really, we add a shoulder extension to sort of accentuate the lengthening of the side, but we don't really need to. Just by leaning, we can feel this opening in the ribs here. And you can even, you can take your hand and when you lean over, if you just rub the ribs here and you come back, you can feel this opening. You can feel the skin stretching here as you lean over, if you have your fingers on there. And that's what we want to feel. We want to feel this stretching and that's going to help open the ribs. That's going to help with the intercostal muscles. And that helps to facilitate our breath. And now let's go more to reaching straight up. And you can also do this just with the elbows up like this. And as you reach up, think about pressing the foot into the floor. So the side of the body that I'm reaching up on, I'm pressing my foot. So it's an isometric contraction of the quadricep here. And then I'm going to switch sides and pressing. I'm pressing the foot, that foot, lifting. Pressing that foot, 
If you want, you can extend the arm all the way up. So your choice here. It's like I'm grounding my foot as I'm reaching up. I'm grounding my foot. You might even feel a little bit in the buttocks as you press the feet down. So I'm activating the leg and the buttock at the same time. And then we'll come back down. And then we're going to do both sides. We're going to lift the arms up. You can extend all the way or you can do the elbows. And then I'm going to press both feet at the same time. Pressing both feet at the same time. So if this bothers your shoulders to do both arms, sometimes when we try to do them together, it's harder. You can continue to work with one hand and press both feet at the same time. So sometimes just doing one arm with, if, if you have issues with shoulders, helps to remove some of the um, uh, difficulty when we do two. You can also, if you're doing both hands, you can interlace the fingers and do it like this. It's another choice. And this one's probably more uh, challenging for the shoulders than this or this. So you have to kind of decide, you know, where am I at today? What feels okay? And let's take a few breaths. And exhale. So we're going to inhale and exhale. A few more times. If you can, try closing the eyes here. Just letting the arms sweep out to the side on the in-breath. And they sweep back together on the out-breath. And see if you can find them coming together without looking. So it sometimes takes a little practice. And in the beginning, they might be a little, a little off. They might not hit exactly. But with practice, we begin to feel where our body is in space. We call, that's a, a, a skill we call proprioception that we can actually develop. We can develop that. So people who are, uh, people who dive, High, you know, high, people who dive off diving boards, uh, gymnasts have very good proprioception skills. They can, they feel where their body is without actually be, having to see where their body is. They learn that. I mean, it takes practice. And let's rub our hands together. And then rub the backs of the hands. And then the back of the other hand. And then rub the palms together again. And then we're going to give a little massage for the palms. So taking the uh, meaty part of the thumb here, and notice that my fingers are between the index finger and the thumb. And I'm just going to roll that part out like this. Get a little closer so you can see. I'm holding my hand like this, and I'm rolling like this. And I'm going to do each part. I'm going to do three parts. I'm going to do here between the index and thumb. I'm going to do the base of the thumb. Base of the thumb. And I'm going to do the outside where the pinky is. This helps to open the palm here and do the other side now. Might be easier to start with just one side of the hand. So maybe the pinky side and then go between the index and the thumb. And then finally do the base of the thumb. So this is a nice thing to do if you've been on the computer a lot or if you have to use the computer later today. If you can remember when you take your break, thinking about maybe uh, they recommend breaks every 20 or 30 minutes from the computer for just a very short time, even a minute or two, as a way to relieve some of our, our chronic either hunched over or... Uh, <clears throat> We also get um, shortening in the front of the body here from being in this position. So just even just standing up, but also the hands and the wrists. A lot of people have trouble with their wrists and their hands. So try this and see if it helps. And we'll sit, uh, sit up nice and tall. We're going to stand up now. 
but you can still do this seated. So I'm going to show it standing first. So if you're seated, just pause there for a minute, you know, just wait one minute. So this is that, this is an exercise that's going to help to open the uh, shortened muscles on the front of the body. So normally when we sit, when we sit, I'm just going to demonstrate as if I was sitting, my leg would be in this position. Of course, my back, my other leg would not be straight. So I'm going to stand up nice and tall like this, and I'm going to step my foot back. Noticing that my, my toes are on the floor. And then I come back and I step forward a little bit past the foot. This helps to release the, uh, actually, I'm going to do this side so you can see it better. And I'm going to turn a little bit too, see if that helps. So I step back and notice there's a lengthening and an opening on the front of the hip here. And then I step forward and that's going to help relax. So everything relaxes when I, when I step my foot forward, the buttocks and the hamstrings relax here. And then when I step back, I'm engaging the buttock. So think about squeezing the buttocks together. And then also the hamstrings engaging, and then I come back. So I'm going to go back and forth like that. And if you're seated, I'm going to go one. So why don't we do, um, we'll do eight times on each side. So do eight times on one side and then eight times on the other. And if you're seated, if you're seated, you can do the same thing or a similar, similar thing. We slide to the, towards the edge of the chair. And then I'm going to step my foot back like this. And notice how this also opens the front. You may need to lean a little bit to the side. This is going to be, if you have a, a chair with an arm here, you may not be able to do that. So you may need to switch, find a different chair for next time. I'm stepping back. And if you're seated, it might be helpful to actually rest the fingertips so remember, if you're standing, switch legs after you've done eight. It might be good to put the uh, fingertips on the chair to help keep us lifted. There's a tendency for, it's a little easier when we're standing to keep the heart lifted as we do this exercise. So if you're seated, switch sides now, do the other side. And if you're standing, come back to mountain pose when you're done. Come back to your mountain pose when you're done. And take a couple of breaths. And then we'll take a few cactus breaths. So whenever, so if you're, if you've been doing this seated and you've completed eight on each side, go ahead and join us for some cactus breaths. So swinging the arms. It can be nice when you're standing, you can get a little bit more swing or, or a feeling of swing as you move the arms back and forth. So whatever feels nice here, you could do it just like this. You can do it with the arms up, or you can do more of a sort of a, a bird flying style like this. And then we're gonna sit back down. And if you're seated, we're gonna take a few breaths here with, the, with movement. So we're inhaling up and exhaling down. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Shoulders are soft, shoulders are nice and relaxed. And whenever you're ready, you can change your direction. Palms up, arms up as we inhale. And if the chin goes up and down a little, that's okay. And last one, we'll bring our hands together right in front of the heart. So I'm going to find our, uh, our relaxation pose. So feel free for this one to put a uh, blanket behind you. Some people might like to roll up something and put it right at their lumbar spine or even a little bit lower. It's going to depend a lot on, it's going to depend on your chair. You'll have to experiment with this one. But sometimes having a little bit of, uh, 
something that the lumbar spine helps to support, uh, put a little bit, it puts a little bit more curve in the spine. And notice it's not big. This roll up isn't very big. So I, I don't want to feel like I'm, my belly is being pushed out. I want to feel like I'm comfortable and it's easier to sit up, easier to sit up. And the hips are about, uh, the knees are about hip width apart or maybe a little bit wider. And then I'm going to rest my hands wherever is comfortable on the knees, on the legs, in the lap. It doesn't matter as long as the shoulders can relax. And then as you breathe in, as you take a, a few breaths like this, think about feeling the belly expanding and then the ribs expanding. And lastly, a little bit of movement, the collarbones are opening. So it's almost like if you bring your uh, hands up and you find there's a little hollow area right in front of the shoulders here. So the collarbones are right here. The hollow area is right here in front of the shoulders. It's almost like that hollow area is, is opening and moving back so that my shoulders are opening. But this movement is small up here. Remember, the biggest movement when we breathe is down in the belly from the diaphragm, pressing the, uh, the internals down. But the most important thing is to be able to breathe comfortably and fully and in a relaxed way. So we want to be very relaxed when we breathe. We want to be very relaxed when we breathe. I'm going to do a guided relaxation here. So please follow along and you can make the, the words that I say, the words that I say, repeat them, try repeating them to yourself. It's kind of like an auto-suggestion thing. And uh, we'll start with um, softening the crown of the head. So imagine the crown of the head is relaxed, right up at the top of the head. Relax the top of the head. Soften the top of the head. I relax the top of my head. I relax my eyes. Relax my eyes. I soften my temples. I soften my temples. I release the jaw and the tongue and the throat. I release the jaw, tongue and throat. I let go of the shoulders and the neck. I let go of the shoulders and neck. Soften the arms, the hands, and fingers. Soften the arms, hands, and fingers. Relax the belly. Soften the heart. Relax the belly and soften the heart. And release the back, the upper back, the middle back, the lower back. And release the back, upper back, middle back, lower back. And soften my buttocks and my hips and my groins. Soften my buttock, hips, and groins. Relax my legs, my thighs, my knees, shins, and calves. Relax my legs, thighs, knees, shins, and calves. Soften the ankles. Soften the ankles. I relax my feet and toes. Relax my feet and toes. Allow my whole body to relax. Allow my whole body to relax. I am relaxed. We'll continue for about a two minute silent meditation focused on the breath. 
focused on the breath. You can even repeat to yourself, I am relaxed. We'll begin that now. And we conclude our class with a word from the Sanskrit language for thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you all very much. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, this is Bhatya Blumenthal, Branch Supervisor of the Putterham Library, uh, rejoining um, just to say thank you to Keith for uh, walking us through this um, the, this practice again this week. I wanted to thank the Friends of the Pu Brookline Public Library for sponsoring this program and other programs like it. Um, I also wanted to thank our partners at Brookline Interactive Group for helping us to um, to further our reach to allow other people to enjoy this great program as well. Um, you can see videos of this on Brookline Interactive's group's uh, YouTube page, as well as um, uh, as well as uh, RCN and Comcast uh, chan local channel three. Um, and with that, we have about four minutes. If anyone has any questions, anybody like to share anything or ask a question? I don't have any questions, but I've got a link. It's Sheila. I got a link to a YouTube gentle yoga by Adrian. It's uh -huh. less than 20 minutes long. And, and every day that we don't do this, at least it makes me do something. And then I then I try to do a more leg stretching than she does. But I recommend it for anybody. It's easy to find. And it's Adrian gentle yoga. There are a lot of them. But I think her that particular program is um it's helpful and it's in your style. It's in yeah, your style. You. Yeah, I've seen some of her videos. She's been around for a long time, actually. Yeah, she's good. Um, right? Yeah, that was a good suggestion. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Well, it's kind of a don't forget. You still have to do it. <laughs> yeah. And that's the, the other thing is 
you know, I always, in, I always encourage people, you know, take some notes. You know, that's the best way to learn this stuff really is to take notes. Just have a piece of paper nearby and jot down a couple of things and it'll help you remember things. Um, Cause oftentimes, at least I know for me, if I really get into a class, I don't remember a lot at the end because I'm, I guess I'm spaced out or something. I, I don't know. I'm into whatever the yoga thing is. So, so it's helpful to me. I can remember stuff a lot better if I write it down. But thank you. Thank you, Sheila, for that. Anybody else? All right. I guess we're, we're good. If you have, you're always welcome to email me if you want, if you have any questions or anything. So thank you all. Have a great weekend. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Keith. Thank, Thank you, Batia. And, Thank you. Uh,